were in there. And of course, the real super holy grail is to find a system that has not only such a Jupiter, but also the Earth itself. After almost 20 years of searching, things are looking up. J101472, 11 hours 40. Coming up. We're finding new planets like crazy all the time. Um, every week or two, we find another new one on average. Look at that one. That's a beauty. Let's see how that corrects up. Yeah, that's a planet. We have about 700 stars on our program. And I'd say the, the thing that's really most amazing to us is how many of them appear like they have planetary signals embedded in them. All right, let's go to the next star. Roger. Do you have Jason's new target list? I'm loading it right now. The team is tracking several stars that appear to have Jupiters right where they want them. Far out from their host stars and in perfect position to shield life-friendly planets like Earth. We are always following some exciting Jupiters. Uh, we don't tell anybody about them. But at any given time, we have a half a dozen Jupiters that look like our own Jupiter. If their hunches are confirmed, then not only are there other solar systems that look like ours, there may be lots of them. 90% of the stars show no close-in Jupiters. Those are stars that could easily have an Earth in an Earth-like orbit. I think of the 700 stars we're following, I would bet at least half of them have rocky, Earth-sized planets going around them. Just a decade ago, astronomers could not be sure if there were any planets beyond our solar system. Today, we have a much better picture of our galaxy. And Jeff Marcy estimates that of the several hundred billion stars in the Milky Way, about 5% have small, rocky planets that might harbor life. If he's right, that could mean 10 billion Earth-like planets. But before you start packing your bags to visit an extraterrestrial neighbor, consider this. Just because a planet can support life, does that mean it will? It's a crucial factor of the Drake equation, the percentage of planets where life does arise. On a planet where no life exists, like our own early Earth, how does life suddenly come into being? Is the spark of life rare or common? 25 years ago, most people, when they thought about the origin of life, thought in terms of inherently improbable reactions that would actually occur because of the fullness of time. Andy Knoll is a paleontologist who studies fossils for clues to how early life evolved on Earth. Before about 600 million years ago, all life on Earth was tiny, single-celled creatures so small that Knoll and his colleagues do most of their work with microscopes or in chemistry labs. The big surprise is that no matter where they look for signs of ancient life, they find it. Our planet is about four and a half billion years old. We have evidence from the oldest rocks that we know of, at least the oldest sedimentary rocks we know of, that by about 3.8 billion years ago, life had already gained a foothold on our planet. Scientists haven't figured out exactly how that first spark of life happened. But since it seems to have sparked early on, then maybe it isn't so hard. Most people think that whether or not we understand what the chemistry that leads to life is, that it's a chemistry that under the right conditions will pretty much go and, and is a fairly probable chemistry and that therefore life doesn't take billions of years to unfold on a planet, it might unfold in thousands of years or a million years. A lot of people think if you can't do it in a million years, you probably can't do it at all. So what is required to get it all started? Here on Earth, the chemistry of life relies heavily on the element carbon. Carbon is one of the most versatile elements. Each carbon atom can hook up with one, 
two, or three, or four other atoms. It can even link up with other carbon atoms, creating long chains or rings. Throw in a few other elements and you've got amino acids, the ingredients of proteins, the building blocks of life as we know it. Carbon is a very useful element to sit at the center of life's chemistry. There's a lot of it in the universe. It's made very easily in stars. It makes very complicated, meshed together compounds which have the possibility of changing each other's properties. You can have a really complicated, complex setup with carbon. I'd expect that very nearly all life forms we come across that are matter-based are going to be carbon-based. If carbon helps make life happen, then there might be a lot of life out there. Carbon is one of the most common elements in the universe. So if it's got carbon, what else does life need? Lots of oxygen in the air? 72 degrees? We tend to think life belongs in a place that's, well, comfortable for us. But is that really true? In the last few years, we've been finding life practically everywhere on Earth, and not just the obvious spots. Microbes are thriving under rocks in the driest, hottest deserts. Life's doing just fine in the dark bottom of the oceans, warmed by deep sea vents. And now, life is turning up in some of the coldest, bleakest conditions imaginable, including the ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland. So now that we've found life, not just surviving, but thriving just about everywhere on Earth, suddenly, it's looking more likely that life might thrive in lots of places beyond Earth, even if we would find them a bit uncomfortable. If life is common, then we should be able to find signs of it beyond our own little planet. Unfortunately, the evidence has been elusive. It seems as if one crucial ingredient has been missing. The most important requirement for life is liquid water. And that's the defining requirement for life in terms of our solar system. There's plenty of energy, there's plenty of carbon, there's plenty of other elements on all the planets in our solar system. What's rare, and which as far as we know only occurs now on Earth, is liquid water. Liquid water is crucial because it's an ideal solvent. Molecules can easily move around in it and react with one another, allowing the complex chemistry of life to do its thing. For years, it seemed that Earth, with its oceans of liquid water, was an oddball and perhaps the only place in the solar system where life had ever thrived. Then, we started to look more closely at our neighbors. In recent years, NASA spacecraft have sent back images of Mars with stunning detail. And there are clear signs of a watery past. From orbit around Mars, we can see ancient rivers that are now dry, canyons, which look like they had lakes in the middle of them, even what looks like an ancient ocean floor in the northern hemisphere. We see unmistakable